Hello, fourth grade. Welcome back to another episode of Bath Math. We are now in unit six, all about data analysis. It's two weeks long. This unit is very short. Um, we are going to be talking about frequency tables, uh, dot plots, stem and leaf plots. Um, it's super easy. You're going to get it really quickly. Um, it's can you read data, meaning can you tell what a graph or a chart is telling you? Can you answer questions based off of the numbers on that graph or chart? Um, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a bit, but this week we'll be, we will be focusing on frequency tables and dot plots. Next week, frequency tables and stem and leaf plots. Um, there's a little bit of a difference between the two, but you'll catch on pretty quickly. Um, so let's get started. <laughs> These are the essential questions and sentence stems for the week. Pause the video to read over them, but they are also available on your Math Blend page. Here is the vocabulary for the week. Feel free to pause the video to read over the words and see if there are any you may not know. Okay, I'm not kidding when I say it's really simple. Um, frequency tables just means a table to list each item and the number of times it occurs. So frequency is just like a big fancy word to say number of times something happens, right? Um, or number of times somebody says, a class might say they have something. So for example, um, if I were to make a frequency table um, of fourth grade and what pets they have at home, uh, let's say I listed dog, cat, and fish. Those are the pets. Um, and then I would tally up. So I would go around, what do you have? A dog, what do you have? A cat. I would make tallies of whenever somebody said I they had something, right? So let's just say for example sake, uh, da, da, da. I went around for about 10, 15 minutes. I ended up coming back and I had six people that had dogs. I made tallies. So I put the number that were there. Three people had cats and 10 people had fish. That's it. That's a frequency table. How many I made tallies. I saw how many times or how many people had dogs, how many people had cats and how many had fish. I added up those tallies and I made the numbers. That's it. So that's what a frequency table is. Now, the complicated part, or not the complicated, but more difficult part is when they ask you questions about it. So how many more, you know, fish than dogs, or maybe how many all together, like you're going to get questions based off of a frequency table um, and see that you understand the data that's within it. Within it. So um, hopefully this makes sense, but if not, I'm going to jump into another example. Um, and then we'll talk about dot plots, but this is super simple. You should be able to get it. And if not, we'll have plenty of practice this week to get there, okay? <laughs> okay, so these are examples of other frequency tables. Um, you could even make up your own if you wanted to survey um, your class, your family, your friends, whoever you wanted to ask questions to. These are just a couple that I've thought of. Um, how many coins people had in their pockets. And you, just by counting up the tallies, um, you should know that, uh, when it has a line across, you can count by fives. When it doesn't, that means they're singular, right? So just one, but um, so filling in these charts to get the frequency or the number of times that, that they had this or it was presented. Pennies, there were three people. Nickels, I can see that that's five plus two more, that's seven. Uh, dimes, four, quarters, two. So I have figured out the frequency for each time these were mentioned or said or they had. Um, <clears throat> let's see, favorite TV show. So someone surveyed, um, is your favorite type of TV show comedy, drama, or sports? And people said comedy or drama. They picked one, right? So there were uh, seven people that picked comedy, 10 people that picked drama, and four people that picked sports, just by counting the tallies. Simple. Um, but I'll give you two more examples. So favorite subject, ELA, four people said ELA. Math, seven people said math. SLA, four people said SLA. 
course I put seven more on math because this is bad math. Anyway, <laughs> um, siblings, three people said they had zero siblings, brothers and sisters. Uh, let's see. There were seven people that said they had one brother or sister, two people that said they had uh, excuse me, nine people that said they had two brothers and sisters and there were five that said they had three. So, um, again, if you know what tally marks are, um, seeing a table with data, meaning there's something being counted, you need to see how many times that would be the frequency of that item. So, um, and then you would get questions like how many people chose nickels? Did you count it correctly? How many more chose nickels than quarters. So being able to see and being able to do that simple math. Um, how many were there all together? How many people were asked of data? How many people didn't do this? So that's kind of the questions that you'd get, but really it's just making sense of the word problem um, based off the data that you see in these charts or tables. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions during your Zoom calls and you should be fine. Um, but if not, plenty of opportunities to practice in Dreambox and in your assignments. Hmm. Okay, here comes a bit of a twist or a curveball. Um, let's say you get a list of these numbers and one of the test questions asks you or, you know, problems ask you to make a frequency table based off that. Where would you start? What would you do? You know, it has to be a table. So we can start by creating a table. Um, so this isn't asking about favorite TV shows or dimes or siblings or anything. What, what is it showing me? Just a bunch of numbers, right? Um, but I can see that some of them kind of repeat themselves. Some of them don't. Um, maybe that it's my data instead of, you know, uh, coins and siblings and TV shows. Maybe it's just numbers. So maybe I would be putting my first column as numbers. This is still tallies, and then this is my frequency, right? So that last column is always like how many there were of that. So what do I see? Let me see. I see a 20. Okay, I see a 21. Going in order, I see 23, 25, and I see a 30. So that is my data. I'm looking to see how many there are of each. Okay. How many 20s do I see? That's one, two, three. So there are one, two, three. I see three 20s. How many 21s? One, two, three. Did I miss any? No, one, two, three. Okay. How many 23s? One. I see one 23. How many 25s? One, two. Okay, how many 30s? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so I just made a frequency table based off this data. I saw the numbers that they had listed. I saw how many times they appeared, and I wrote down just for my own information so that I could see. Um, I added up the tallies and I saw how many I have total of each. Then based off of this table, I can answer more questions, right? So how many 21s were there? Three. How many more, you know, 21 or 20, 21 and 30 all together were there than the 25s? So you can kind of go based off there. The interesting thing though, is that you can also do the same thing with this data, not create a frequency table and make a dot plot. Let me show you what dot plots are, and then we'll come back to this example and show you how you can do the exact same thing, okay? <laughs> okay, dot plots <laughs> um, are what the name is, um, shows how often each occurs. It's the same thing as a frequency table, again, just showing you in a different way. Um, here's an example. I wrote down a, basically a number line um, and titled it minutes. So these are the amount of minutes, zero minutes, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, so on. I surveyed a class to see how long they take to eat breakfast. Um, I had two people tell me they take two minutes. I had three people take me, they tell me they take th uh, three minutes. I had four people, excuse me, two people tell me they take four minutes. 
I had one, two, three, four, five, six people tell me they take five minutes to eat breakfast, four people that they take six minutes to eat breakfast, and three that they take seven minutes to eat breakfast. Um, that's all it is. So looking at this data, you can see quickly which one has the most, right? Because it's the highest. So five minutes has the most amount of people, or that's the most amount of people it take to eat breakfast. Um, and then the least, you can see that the least amount of people take about four minutes. So um, not as many take that long. So um, yeah, this is just another interesting visual to see data. Um, and to be able to analyze it to answer questions for your problems, um, exercises and test questions and things like that. So um, let me show you a couple more examples and uh, then this week you'll be able to create your own um, and answer some questions from those. So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions during Zoom, but let me show you more. Okay, um, here is some data and they're asking us to put it into a dot plot. Um, all I did was create a number line that had in within the range of these numbers. So I saw 15s, I saw 19, so I kind of stuck within that. Um, and then I also saw fractions, which is interesting. So at a fourth, so I just assumed every piece was at a fourth, which it is. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I can still plot those within, right? Um, going back to our fractions unit. Um, so looking at these numbers, I can then begin to plot them and cross them out and make sure that I have them all on here. So I see a 15. I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to put a dot on 15. I see another 15. I'm going to put another dot. I see 16 and 3 fourths. So 16 and 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. So 16 and 3 fourths. That goes there. I see 18. I can cross that out. 18. I see another 18 and one more then i see 19 and two fourths 19 and one and two fourths so one dot here and then i see a 17. so that's my dot plot that's it based on the data that they gave me i'm able to cross all of these out because i already placed them on here i can see which one has the most which would be 18 right i could answer that question if they were to ask me um, which three have the least? I could say the 16 and 3 fourths, the 17 and the 19 and 2 fourths. Um, how many do I have all together? You could also answer that. Um, and so this is basically a dot plot. So taking some data points and then putting them on here just to see the amount, the frequency, um, or the number of those, that, that data. Um, let me show you one more example. <laughs> Okay, one thing that's super important to point out to you is that it doesn't always have to be on a number line. The bottom doesn't always have to be this, this number line like I've created in the last two examples. It can just be names of something. So um, <clears throat> I made a list of the number of snakes that are at a zoo. So you can see here that there are four black cobras, there are three pythons, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight anacondas, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six rattlesnakes. So um, that is a dot plot in itself. You can make a frequency table out of this information. Um, you can tally up the number of dots you see, you can put the total amount, um, or you can just leave it like this and answer questions based off that. Um, just always be sure to make sure like double check your work. Um, I always like to just count them and write the number nearby if you don't see any numbers. So one, two, three, four, I'm checking. There's four, yes, there's three here, yes. Anaconda, there's eight, and then there's six, right? So just by writing that down, making your little annotations or notes um, is super helpful in when you get questions. So if you get if you do get a question that's like, how many anacondas and rattlesnakes total? If you make a mistake counting those dots, um, you can always double check by actually just like doing the math, um, standard algorithm or another way that another strategy you might have up your sleeve. Um, and same goes for any other questions. So as simple as these may seem or be, um, they are, but I've seen a lot of really silly mistakes and errors just by not double checking or being detail oriented. So, um, yes, it's easy. Just make sure that you take the time to check your work. Um, before you move on to any other question, okay? Um, let me show you the frequency table uh, example um, along with the dot plot, and then I'll show you some visuals and you can get straight into your work. Um, 
but yeah. <laughs> okay, so now knowing what we know about dot plots, I came back to this example. We had made a frequency chart earlier in this video, um, and now we're going to make a dot plot next to it. So all I did was create almost like a number line. Well, it is a number line, um, but it's not precise, right? It's not like 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. It's not counting by anything in particular. All I did was make the numbers, put them in order the same way I did in a frequency table, but now on a line, right? Um, so same thing, I would go through and mark how many there were of each one, but instead of a tally mark, I'm doing this with dots. Um, and so for 20, I had three. So I would put one, two, three. For 21, I also had three, right? And even if I hadn't made this frequency chart, I could still count them off. So 20, I had done one, two, three. 21, one, two, three. I can always double check. 23, I only had one, okay? 25, I had one, two, two. Did I have two? Yes, right? And 30, I had one, two, three. So it's just another way to see data. Um, this way you can see the numbers. Okay, there's three threes, there's one two, there's one one. Um, here you can see the same thing. You can mark kind of across, like, okay, these three land around the same. This one is a little bit lower and obviously this one's lower. You can see the data that way. Um, this all just goes in relation to our unit as a whole, data analysis. You're analyzing the information that they're giving you and you're being able to represent it in different ways and then be able to answer questions from that. Um, could you have done that easily from here? Oh, it would have cost you a little bit. It would, it would have made you kind of maybe make a mistake and saying, well, there's 20 20s and maybe could you have answered the, an the questions as easily? Probably not, right? And so it's always easy to, or better to make a visual for yourself just to double check your work. Um, so yeah, same problem, two different ways to show it. Um, and then from there you can answer any questions that the problems or um, assignments or tests might have. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions after this. Um, this week, you will be practicing a lot of this, so let me know. <laughs>